Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going through exercise 1.43 from the Art of Electronics. And this question focuses on a diode limiter circuit and we need to analyze the response from a given circuit. So the circuit that we've been given and the question says, sketch the output of the circuit shown on the green now. So we have a power supply that is producing 6.3 volts on one side from a another voltage on the other side but we can represent that transformer with just this power supply here so we have a 6.3 volt signal i've given 50 hertz the frequency has not been provided in the question and then this is followed by one kilo ohm resistor and then two diodes the diodes are connected such that one's pointing forward and the other one's pointing in the reverse direction so the reverse direction one is this, and then this is the forward direction one. So in order to answer this question, first of all, we need to understand the characteristics of a diode. So on the screen now, you've got a forward and the reverse characteristics or the IV curve for a diode. So essentially a diode lets a current flow in one direction and blocks current flowing in the other direction up to a limit. So first of all, let's look at some of the characteristics. So a typical diode will turn on or start conducting a lot of current after 0.7 volts. The value is smaller depending on the type of diode. So if you've got a shock key diode, then it might be 0.4 volts as well. Now this point over here that I'm pointing to with the words knee voltage is the cut-in or the threshold voltage. And this is the minimum voltage required to turn the diode on and allow a significant amount of current. So you can see in an ideal case, the current would be basically vertical like this. However, in this case, there is a bit of a slope as the current goes up, the voltage also goes up, but a little bit less. And this is due to the internal parasitic resistance of the diode. This is basically a small resistance that's present in the diode itself and the connecting pins. And it's because of the materials used in the construction and the physical dimensions of the diode. This parasitic resistance will cause some power loss, especially at higher currents. So this side of the graph describes the forward conduction. So until the knee voltage or the cut-in voltage, you basically have very little current flowing through. There will be some small leakage current that does go through. And then after the knee voltage, you get a sharp rise in current with a small rise in voltage. Now this small rise in voltage will depend on the current basically, but it shouldn't be very high. Now if you connect the diode in reverse voltage, such that the positive voltage is applied to the cathode, initially you will have some small leakage current until the point known as the breakdown voltage. So if a voltage above the breakdown voltage is applied to the diode, then the diode will stop allowing a lot of current to flow through, and this can permanently damage a diode. There are some diodes that are specially designed for this feature, where the reverse breakdown voltage will be tuned such that it's much lower, so something like 3.6 volts, 3.9 volts. And they are typically used to regulate voltage or TVS diodes, which would be used to kind of prevent voltage ESD spikes from damaging circuits. A typical silicon diode may have a reverse breakdown voltage of 100 volts. But this does depend on the diode itself, so read the data sheet. So I hope the explanation for the diode helped. I did want to quickly show the anode and the cathode. So the this direction, or this, this is the symbol for the diode, and this is the anode, and this side is the cathode. So now let's move on to the question itself. I've broken it down into four slides, um, which will make it easier for to analyze. So let's look at when the positive voltage is applied, but the voltage itself is less than 0.7 volts. In this case, you have a positive voltage here. So let's say it's 0.6 volts. You have zero volts here. So that means that this diode is not conducting. Therefore, this node here can be ignored. The other diode is connected in the reverse direction, so that is also not activated. Therefore, all the voltage that appears on this will go to the output. So essentially what you have is a one kilo ohm resistor and a 
large value resistor represented with this diode. So all the voltage will be transferred to the output. Now again, for another case where we have a positive voltage again, but this time the voltage supply is more than 0.7 volts. So in this case, you have the diode entering its conduction phase. So the diode itself will start to drop a lot of current, but the voltage across it will not change that much. The current that the diode drops will be limited by this one kilo ohm resistor. However, this voltage will be maintained very close to 0.7 volts. But as the current does increase, so you know, as you increase this sine wave up to 6.3 volts, the diode will start to increase its voltage drop. And you can see that on simulation that I have at the end. Now let's look at the negative voltage and we have a voltage supply that's less than 0.7 volts. And in this case, so we have a zero volts here and let's say we have minus 0.6 volts over here. In this case, this diode is also not conducting. So this resistor basically is passing all the 0.6 volts to the output. Now, if we to increase the voltage past 0.7 volts, this diode starts to conduct. However, the voltage drop off this diode will be limited to 0.7 volts. But as the current increases with similar to the positive voltage, the diode voltage drop will increase with current. So you can see that on simulation later. On the screen now, I've got the diode limiter circuit that I've put together on LT Spice. So we have two diodes over here. I've just used a generic 1N4148 diodes for this example and a 1K resistor as we have in the question. So if I press simulate on this, I described to you that the input voltage is 6.3 volts as given in the question. So we have that over here and the output voltage of this circuit we have on this side. Now, if you remember what I said, up until 0.7 volts, roughly, the output will follow the input. So we have 0 volts over here. And as we start to increase the input voltage, the blue line and the green line are tracking. And as soon as we get up close to 0.7 volts, the diode will start to conduct and the two lines start to diverge. V out will try and stick to basically 0.7 volts. But as you increase the current that's going through this diode or going through this circuit, you can see that the diode voltage, which is in green, is also increasing with the current. And this is due to the parasitic resistance of the diode. For an ideal case, what would happen is that this curve would go to 0.7 volts, tracking the input signal perfectly and then would stay level at 0.7 volts. And as the voltage was coming down and became less than 0.7 volts, it would start tracking the input voltage again. You can see the current in the circuit increases because if you imagine this point is stuck at 0.7 volts. So imagine a case where the voltage is more than 0.7 volts. So you've got this point at 0.7 volts. And this will be changing, increasing. So you'll have more and more voltage across this resistor. So just doing Ohm's law calculation on this, you can see there's more current flowing in this circuit just from that. So hopefully this explanation was useful. If you have any feedback for me, please let me know in the comment section below. So thank you for watching today. I have other Art of Electronic questions on my channel. So check out the playlist Art of Electronics if you want to see them.